part two of the chapter called The Fulfillment, chapter 16 from the book Beyond Mortal Boundaries. Now, to pray with all the energy of heart simply means to focus the desires of the inner being upon so great a gift as pure divine Christ-like love. Desire it. Exercise love. Utilize it constantly and pray for it with all the energy of heart and the promise of Prime Creator is that you shall be possessed of it and it will be well with you. Such a one will indeed receive the very fullness of the divine gift of love insomuch that he and she will be literally possessed or owned and controlled by this divine and sacred love at all times and all occasions. And it never fails. Love never fails. It increases with utilization. In such a condition, only beauty and happiness and understanding and inner standing could possibly come into the life of such an individual. The song or vibration of joyous, glorious love would forever fill his and her entire being and then flow forth from him and her to bless and heal and glorify all that he and she contacted, either in thought or casual passing. <clears throat> Pardon. And especially those whom he and she concentrated that love upon in prayer would receive the blessing it held. As one grabs hold of this first and great commandment and proves its unspeakable powers, he and she will clothe him and herself in its glory. In it is contained the key to the doors of heaven as he and she completes his and her journey along that straight and narrow way that leads to life eternal or to the unveiling of the face of prime creator. This first and great commandment is the door that opens up and reveals the straight and narrow way so that one may begin to travel that glorified highway of holiness, sacredness, to complete purification of his and her heart. As one enters that sacred doorway to the straight and narrow way, he and she also learns that that first and great commandment is not only the door, yet is also the very way itself. As one begins forth and perfects that love within him and herself, he and she is literally walking with Prime Creator. This greatest of all privileges, this opportunity to live and fulfill that greatest of all glories, the perfecting of love within oneself, he and she will find the power of his and her own divine completion and perfection within that holy, sacred, divine bit of instruction is contained all that heaven holds as it is perfected in the heart and soul and mind of man and woman. And man becomes that love, pure, glorified, powerful, and dynamically eternal. He and she is no longer a mere mortal. He and she has evolved from the man kingdom into the God kingdom as he and she has traveled that straight and narrow way that leads to life eternal. Prime Creator is love. As one becomes possessed of this great love, he and she is literally born of Prime Creator, as is promised in the epistles of St. John. And he and she can henceforth commit no sin. The greater works that Christ talked about were not the ones performed in words, yet in power, unheralded and unspoken in most instances, and unacclaimed, as love is released and poured out to heal and to bless, bliss and to glorify. In Matthew chapter 4 is given the account of the great exploits and seeming miracles that will be performed by those who are evil and wicked and who are the workers of Satan's kingdom as they go forth to deceive even the very elect if possible. Many will be deceived by their words and their demonstrations and miracles. 
these deceived ones will rush to and from one acclaimed prophet or false Christ to the next. Or it may be that they will be so blinded by the show of false power, they will yield their beings, minds, bodies, and souls to the worshiping of the beast. At the time of the end, the angel informed Daniel, many shall be purified and made white and tried to see if they like Christ, to see if they like Christ can resist the temptation to manifest their powers and so prove that they are actually of prime creator as they suppose. And the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. Yet the wise shall understand and understand. Daniel chapter 12 verse 10. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Yet thou, O Daniel, shut up thy words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Daniel chapter 12, verses 3 and 4. And though knowledge is increased, they will never be able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Only as one lives the laws can he and she possibly know of their truth and their power. As one lives that first and great commandment, he and she will have fulfilled all the laws and the prophets. He will no longer be under the laws and will have advanced beyond them. Having fulfilled all things, he and she will have overcome the world, even as Christ did. He and she will also be doing the works that Christ did in power rather than in words. And he and she who overcomes to this extent will naturally overcome death, the last enemy. And those who overcome to the extent that death is required to back down before them will find that they have fulfilled all things. They will be joint heirs or co-heirs with Yehoshua Christ, Yeshua, Sananda. Let's make it simple and just start calling Yeshua, his cosmic name, Sananda. For such is the promise. In other words, they will be co-equal with Christ, and they will sit down with Christ on Christ's throne. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. They will have fulfilled that dimic admonition of St. Paul. Let the same mind be in you that was also in Christ, Yeshua, who being in the form of of prime creator thought it not robbery to be equal with prime creator as the great love is perfected the little ego mortal self is put aside and with eyes solely single to the glory of prime creator and with nothing except love flowing forth from one's entire being that individual will go forth born of the spirit and in the power and the majesty of almighty prime creator to render the greater service and to do the greater works he and she will literally be a member of the kingdom of prime creator, queendom of prime creator. Not a self-acclaimed bragging preaching individual, yet one clothed in power and light. For my kingdom and queendom is not in word, yet in power, saith Christ. These greater works that Christ promised will be performed in power, not in words. One born of the spirit will have the power to come and go as the wind, to render service according to the need as he blisses and blesses performing some act of love and comfort and healing. Then, without fanfare or waiting to bask in praise or thanks of self-acclaim or acknowledgement, he and she will go on to some other assignment, and the one whom he and she has just assisted will not know from what assignment he and she just came or where he and she has gone. These will be the greater works works without fanfare or demonstrating, and often without words. Those who have not perfected love, who are still following the little ego, mortal self, will want it to be made known and proclaimed aloud that it was through them that the healing was accomplished, the miracle performed, the need supplied, and they will be but the workers of darkness. 
Those who cannot relinquish such desires for credits and acknowledgments will never have part in the greater works. These, like Christ, will be tempted to make a great demonstration of the power vested in them as being something personal and may, unlike Christ, fail to resist such a temptation. They who cannot relinquish their cravings for outward show will seek to exalt themselves in a flame of self-righteous demonstrations, and so will join the miracle workers who will have power to even call down fire from heaven. These pitifully misguided ones, <clears throat> pardon, these pitifully misguided ones will be the individuals who will flock to the false prophets and the false Christs and to those who shout and contort and do unseemly things in so much that they will not only be deceived themselves, but will assist in deceiving the very elect, if possible. The elect will be those who love Prime Creator with their entire beings, their hearts, souls, minds, and strength. They are Christ's sheep, and they will know Christ's voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Their very love will exalt them to the status of the elect, the sons and daughters of Prime Creator, and they are called sons of Prime Creator. They are called daughters of Prime Creator, who are led by the spirit of Prime Creator, and the keys of the kingdom, queendom, that is power, will be placed in their hands, and they will be co-heirs with Christ to reign forever and ever in the light of eternal truth. Thus, the greater works can only be performed by those who have overcome. They will be performed in silence, not in words. Their fruits will continually manifest and bear witness of their status and worth. And no matter how the wicked may manifest the gifts of the Spirit and their proclamations testify of their being chosen of Prime Creator, the evil within them will be made apparent to those who truly love Prime Creator. The very spirit they carry will be repulsive and abhorrent to those who love Prime Creator and who are Prime Creator's elect. And it is the righteous or the elect only who will be endowed with that most gracious, wonderful gift called the spirit of discernment. This gift of discernment holds the keys of being able to discern between the righteous and the wicked as those who are truly servants of the living prime creator perform some great work of mercy and blessing and then go upon their way not waiting to receive either praise or acknowledgement or credit the power of prime creator will be continually increased upon them they have within themselves become the very least or servant of all that is required in order to become the greatest This greater glory and these greater works of everlasting value pertain only to those who have eyes single to the glory of Prime Creator and not to their own aggrandizement. And those who wish to demonstrate will find this holy sacred path is not for them. These greater works can only be performed by those who have overcome all things, even as Christ overcame. And the overcoming is of the little mortal ego self with its evil cravings for glory and recognition and importance. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about me, 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 me. It's about all of us united. Get it yet? Not having sought for glory or acclaim, those overcoming love filled individuals will be glorified. Having developed eyes single to the glory of prime creator, they will take on that glory and be filled with light and comprehend all things. They will shine forth as the firmament and be as the brilliance of the stars forever and ever. The power of Prime Creator will not be made manifest in either words or in unseemly demonstrations or even in the gifts as Paul proclaimed in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. For these former things will be done away, these childish things, when that when that it is perfect is come. And it is true that those who truly love Prime Creator and who perfect that love will have grown into manhood, womanhood, 
they will have left the milk and the breasts and the outgrown crib and the childish ways, for they will have progressed into the status of sonship, daughtership, and perfection. They will no longer behave like children or beguiled by childish enticements and noisy demonstrations. They will be free, powerfully, dynamically free, free from all inferior ways and mortal childish demonstrations. They will walk with Prime Creator in power and majesty. This first and great commandment is indeed the road of, of glory. G -g 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 glory. There's a song in there. Yes. Thank you, Elvis. This first and great commandment is indeed the road of glory as one travels it along the straight and narrow path of unspeakable joy to life eternal. And this way is not a hard, arduous way as the unrighteous may suppose. It is a way of singing, joyous ecstasy. One becomes the singing triumphant glory. Yet he who puts his hand to the plow or sets his mind upon the fulfilling of an invitation as great as that first divine commandment, then looks back, is not fit for the kingdom, queendom. He who looks back to repeat or to retell some individual experiences and that he had been touched for a moment with the finger of inspiration is not fit for the kingdom, queendom. This path is the way in that the individual learns to glorify Prime Creator by developing eyes single to Prime Creator's glory. It is only in this manner or in this developing of the great attitude of gratitude that is love made manifest that one can possibly become glorious. As one glorifies Prime Creator for each supreme moment of enlightenment, he and she must then pass on and leave it behind in order to hold that living contact in the eternal now. Prime Creator's kingdom, queendom, is not in words or in repeated retellings or in hammered exhortations, yet in power, and the power is in the present. Learn to carry or hold that contact with Prime Creator now, and you will become powerful. The miracles or the divine gifts of Prime Creator will automatically follow those who believe and know. Gnosis. They will be as natural and perfect as breathing and living. They will follow in the wake of those who left the perfected love flow forth through their beings and that love always leaves a divine blessing blissing upon those that are contacted and in this silent perfect blissing there is no demonstrating or self-acclaim there is just the outflowing power of prime creator and from one's very robes the power to heal will be made manifest It is through the living of that first and great commandment that the promises are unveiled and the powers of Almighty Prime Creator are released into one's life. Every dynamic promise ever given, when fulfilled, leads one to that great door. Beyond all mortal concepts, the very boundaries of mortality are dissolved and one becomes a translated being, truly born of spirit, ordained literally literally of prime creator and filled with light in so much that he comprehends he and she comprehends all things every promise blends into this promised fulfilling of everlasting overcoming and eternal power beyond the boundaries of mortality this record is sealed with the power of prime creator and no man can loose its seals he and she who will attempt to do so shall himself or herself be destroyed. And the power and the grace of Prime Creator will be upon you, chosen ones, who understand and understand, for you shall be clothed in light and in the power of fulfilling. Yet the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand or understand. And he and she who offers to Prime Creator the great burden of his own anguished weaknesses will be given the power to let go of them, if so be he loves Prime Creator more than he loves his weaknesses, he and she. The greatest offering one can give to Prime Creator is his and her own intense misery. 
as he refuses to be held in bondage by the cravings of the flesh. And in that supreme anguish, he and she shall be given the power to overcome. I gave men weaknesses that they might become strong. They become strong and mighty and glorified in the anguish of their own overcoming. And the anguish is transmuted into eternal strength and glory. Such anguish is such anguish as is held on one's mortal relinquishing is very short. When that suffering is offered freely to Prime Creator, it may be momentary. At the most, it will be for a few days. For as one relinquishes it to Prime Creator, then Prime Creator will lend Prime Creator strength to the accomplishment or to the overcoming. And it is true that the length of one's endurance will be measured by his and her own intensity of desire as he and she reaches for perfection. In the flesh, this testing is the relinquishing of the cravings uh, that one has established in the cells of his mortal flesh. If permitted to remain, they are carried on by the spirit into the realms beyond the grave. It is in the overcoming of those evil little personal cravings or developed dynamic ones of one's inferior habits that one becomes strong and mighty in the anguish which could have endured for ages in the next world have right here on this earth been transmuted into eternal power. As one offers the anguish of his and her physical cravings and desires that prime creator, his very flesh, excuse me, and offers, as one offers the anguish of his physical cravings and desires to prime creator, his very flesh will become spiritualized. Such a privilege and opportunity is boundless. As one lets go of his intense cravings of the flesh, prime creator will accept his and her offerings and the very angels will rejoice over him and her. Come unto me, all you who labor with your mortal weaknesses and physical lusts, and I will give you rest. Rest is the fullness of my glory. As one through his and her own intense desiring to serve prime creator and to perfect him in herself is, the, is thus offered to Christ. His grubby mortal physical cravings will be transformed into spiritual strength. The divine eternal strength and power of overcoming this is the very wonder and marvel and the breathtaking privilege and power of overcoming. It transforms weaknesses into strength. It transforms a mere mortal into a radiant divine being with the power to fulfill all things. Every person on the earth has the power to transform his and her body into beauty and youth and perfection, or as the writer of the Odes of Solomon expressed it, I clothed myself in light and acquired a body free from sorrow, affliction, or pain, or from all ugly physical degenerate lusts and cravings and habits. One can partake of the waters of the fountain of youth. He and she can bathe him and herself in those waters. Yes, come and partake of the waters of life freely. As one trains his and her mind to think only thoughts of love and mercy and compassion, and to mentally bliss and bless all whom establish those vibrations in his and her living emotions. Excuse me, I think I goofed again. As one trains his mind to think only thoughts of love and mercy and compassion and to mentally bless and bliss all whom his thoughts enfold and those he contacts, he and she will soon establish those vibrations in his and her living emotions and they will become a very part of his and her entire being. They will become the habitual feelings that are him and herself in expression. In this process of retraining oneself to think and feel only the most beautiful things possible, one becomes one of the most beautiful beings possible. And it is in this process of transforming him and herself into a love-filled being that one passes beyond mortality and into immortality. As one is transformed by his and her own thinking and feeling habits into a radiant, beautiful person, he and she truly becomes a new being, filled with love and light and joyous youth. Every cell of one's body can thus be transformed from a physical cell into a spiritual one. 
and when one has by the very power and privilege of his and her own thinking and feeling completed this conversion, he and she will be matured spiritually and will be and will be, 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 be born of the spirit. This holy sacred transition belongs to every human being who will only believe and know and who will exert himself or herself to prove that first and great commandment, the key of eternal glory. In the living of that law are held all the keys and the powers of eternal, unspeakable, everlasting beauty and perfection and glory. Come, partake of the waters of life freely, for they are yours. And this will complete chapter 16, the fulfillment from the book Beyond Mortal Boundaries. I love you all. The just keep going. Be love. Bama peace.